This is Glow in the Dark Radio. 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 The Science Fiction Podcast with original independent science fiction written and performed by Mike Luoma with music by Kevin McLeod, the Vatican Assassin Trilogy, and The Adventures of Alibi Jones by Mike Luoma are available in ebook, trade paperback, and audiobook wherever you find your books online. Get links and details at glowinthedarkradio.com. This is the Science Fiction Podcast, Glow in the Dark Radio. I'm your host, your writer and reader, Mike Luoma, and I've got part two of chapter 10 of Vatican Ambassador coming up on this episode. BC, who once was a Vatican assassin, is now trying to move the peace process along between the Universal Islamic Nation, the UIN, and the Universal Trade Zone, UTZ. UTZ controls Earth, the Moon, or, well, pretty much. Er, I didn't mean to say that, but, you know, that's a slip that kind of works. The UTZ controls the Earth and the Earth's orbit, and Lunar Prime on the Moon is supposed to be independent, but is pretty closely allied with the UTZ at this point. But UIN is now pretty much located on Mars. And after a bumpy start, BC is now also trying to work with the new governor of Lunar Prime, Amanda Erskine, and he has a business dinner planned with her. That's just ahead. Daniel McIntyre is done, and BC is now officially Vatican ambassador. And he's about to also hear from the most powerful person in the universe. That's all coming up as we get into Chapter 10, Part 2 of Vatican Ambassador on Glow in the Dark Radio. I'd like to encourage you to leave reviews, if you could, if you've read any of my books and you enjoyed the book, if you could leave a small review or a rating for that book, that would be amazingly helpful. You can also rate and review this podcast wherever you listen to it and let people know about it. That's also incredibly helpful. As a DIYer, I I do all this myself. Anything you can do to help spread the word, even if it's something as simple as as dropping some stars down as part of a review or or a rating, that helps. And for those of you who do that, thank you very much for, for being such a help. And again, if you haven't had the chance to lately, please think about leaving a review or a rating for a book or a podcast. Goes a long way. Of course, being a patron goes an even longer way, and my thank you, big thank you as always, to my patrons who help keep this podcast going. You can become a patron too and help support Glow in the Dark Radio. It's a three-tiered thing. We've got three different membership levels at 2 bucks a month, $5 a month, or $10 a month up to you. I think most people are in at five. There's a few at two and one or two at 10. People kind of go in and out of 10 every once in a while, which is also cool. So thank you for doing that. And you can get in on all this at Patreon. That's the website that I use to host my patrons and to take care of this stuff. It's Patreon, P-A-T-R-E-O-N. So patreon.com slash glow in the dark radio is the place to go to either sign up or learn more, or just in general see what's going on with patrons and Glow in the Dark Radio. And again, thank you if you are a patron already, because you're helping me keep on doing this. It's it's important. Well, we're going to get into Chapter 10, Part 2 of Vatican Ambassador, next on Glow in the Dark Radio. Hi, I'm JC. My co-host Cindy and I host the Fix-It Home Improvement Podcast. We cover projects that every homeowner should know and top-rated products for home and garden, 
And for fans of Mike, we keep you posted on new smart home systems and products like robot vacuums and robot lawnmowers that seemed like science fiction not too long ago. You can check it out on your favorite podcast app. It's Fix It, F-I-X-I-T, Home Improvement. Now here's Vatican Ambassador Chapter 10, Part 2, on Glow in the Dark Radio. Hmm. Incoming communication. Oh, Mr. Richard Wentworth, my favorite species of pond scum. It's been too long. Well, I had to talk to him today anyway. Rumor has it he's been elected the chair of the UTZ Council. Richard Wentworth, how are you? Happy New Year, Campion. Happy New Year. So, is it true what I hear? Are you the new chairman? Me? God, no. Never. I never enjoy the exercise of overt power, Campion. You should know that by now. I much prefer my work behind the scenes. The power behind the throne and all that. No, DeMag is the new chairman of the UTZ board. Folsom decided he'd had enough. Will DeMag honor the truce agreement? Naturally, but that's that's not what I called about. No? No, I'm calling to confirm that we will be attending the February follow-up conference. Has the UIN confirmed yet? Not yet, but it's early yet. Only the first week of the new year, Wentworth. Give them time. Patience is a virtue, they tell me. Wentworth changes the subject. You are to be congratulated, Capian. This truce seems to be holding. I need you to move on the UIN visitation rights, BC says, not missing a beat. Yes, you do, Wentworth apparently agrees. Folsom was fallen behind on a few things. I can assure you, this is one of the areas DeMag is focusing on first. We want progress before we meet again in February. The faster the better, BC says, not mincing his words. Get something in place before the February conference, or we'll just find ourselves revisiting old discussions. You know that. Will you be representing the UTZ again this time, Wentworth? No, no. DeMag wants to do it himself. Sign of his new hands-on leadership, that sort of thing. He'll be coming this time. I'll stay here. We want to be sure he looks like his own man. Looks like being the operative words, huh? BC prods? Clever. DeMag is first among equals, as we all are on the UTZ board. We serve each other. Speaking of serving, is your Pope Linus going to make the journey this time? I haven't been able to get him to commit to it. The Ayatollah won't commit either. Each of them is waiting for the other one to go first. Both stubborn bastards, eh? <laughs> what, now that it's not his idea, Linus doesn't want to come? He didn't come last time either. Maybe he doesn't travel well, Wentworth quips. I'm tempted to just tell each of them the other one has already committed. Then do that, Wentworth encourages BC. What? Try it anyway, see what happens. What have you got to lose? Worse things have been done in the name of peace. The ends will justify the means. <laughs> wow, I don't think I can be that devious. B.C. shakes his head. Don't kid yourself, you. Remember who you're talking to, Campion. I know what you're capable of. Are you getting soft, Campion? Should we worry about you losing your edge? Wentworth chides. Go fuck yourself, B.C. says. Ah, much better. Spoken like a true diplomat. Right. You've confirmed DeMag for the conference. Now get moving on the visitation rights for the UIN's top five holy places, and maybe we can get down to some real discussions next month. Was that it, Wentworth? So dismissive. Your position going to your head, Campion? Good day, Wentworth. Click. And off. Wentworth. What an ass. At least I won't have to see him at the conference this time. As for the others, he's got a point. 
Why not tell the Ayatollah and the Pope what they each want to hear? They don't talk to each other, that's for sure. How would they know I was blowing smoke? Give me a comm line to Vatican City, please. BC calls out to his room's comm unit. Office of the Pope. Opening communications, the comm informs him. Vatican, Office of the Pope. Hello, Ambassador Campion. Greetings, is Pope Linus available? Just a moment. Yes, the Lord's looking on you with favor, Father. Pope Linus is available. He's had a very busy day today, but you're fortunate. He has time for you. Hold a moment, please. Don't tell me how lucky I am to... Ambassador? Your Holiness? What's going on? Well, sir, it's the peace conference. The Ayatollah has confirmed that he is willing to come to the next one in February. He won't admit this publicly until you announce your intent, but he is going to attend, he assures me. Really now? The Pope answers, then a pause. So, are you saying that if I decide to go to the moon for this conference in the first place, I have to announce publicly that I'm going before the Ayatollah will announce publicly that he's going? That still doesn't strike me as fair or... No, Your Holiness, not exactly, B.C. interrupts him. You see, sir, he suggested that you make simultaneous announcements, so neither one of you goes first or last. Really? That's impressive. When would this happen? Well, we have to set a time, B.C. tells him. Tomorrow sometime? The Pope asks B.C. He's asking me? I've got him. But when? Jeez, um... Uh, good. We'll try to set it up for 12 noon Greenwich Mean Time tomorrow, then, B.C. says, committing to the bluff in full. Excellent. Get back to me when you have the Ayatollah's confirmation of the time. And Campion? Yes? I like this idea. It's workable. It's likely I'll be at your conference next month. But it is not official yet. Got me? I understand, B.C. says. So we'll speak later? Yes. I'll call you in six hours. Good enough. Thank you, sir. There's silence as the connection ends. Now for the tough one. Get me Mars Central. U-I-N command, please. B.C. asks the comm. Opening communications, the comm informs him. There's a delay. Communication takes longer to Mars. Greetings, Ambassador Campion. Greetings, Mars Command. May I ask the favor of a communication with the Ayatollah al-Salid, please? It is a matter of great urgency. I see. A moment, please. This will be a harder sell. Hello, Ambassador Campion, the Ayatollah says. Greetings, Your Excellency. You flatter me. I am Ayatollah no more. All praises to Allah. All praises to Allah, Ayatollah. Why do you disturb me? The Ayatollah asks him directly. The Pope has agreed to attend the peace conference, but he is unwilling to make that official announcement until you announce that you are willing to attend. So, we remain at this foolish impasse. Not exactly, B.C. says. Please, hear me out. He is not suggesting that you must make the announcement first before he does, but rather... B.C. pauses for effect. You'll both announce your intentions to attend simultaneously. Simultaneously? Hmm. Interesting. An interesting idea. When would this be? Tomorrow. Twelve noon. Earth Greenwich Mean Time. I see. 
This has promised this idea. I will consider this and call you back. This is a step in the right direction. I believe we will be there for your conference. Excellent. I eagerly await your call. Thank you, Ayatollah. Again, the silence of the ended connection echoes in Campion's chambers. May actually pull this off after all. B.C. hears back from Pope Linus in the afternoon. I will be attending with a full staff contingent of fifty people, Pope Linus tells B.C. We will require rooms for the entire weekend of the 12th through the 16th. I will make a simultaneous announcement to this effect tomorrow at noon, GMT. You will coordinate this with the Papal Communications Office. Thank you, Campion. Thank you, Your Holiness, B.C. says. An underling from the communications office replaces Pope Linus on the line. He coordinates the timed announcement with B.C. B.C. has to cut that conversation short to accept the call from al Salid, confirming that he will attend with 30 staff members. An underling of al Salid's makes the final arrangements after the Ayatollah's message to B.C. It's all finally falling into place. B.C. nods off at his desk, tired after his interplanetary negotiations. He falls asleep, only to wake up when the comm unit beeps. What? Uh, yes? Ambassador Campion? A woman's voice? Who? Yes, this is Campion. It's Governor Erskine, Ambassador. I thought we were to meet. She sounds pissed. What time is it? Oh shit, I'm an hour late. She's gonna hate me even more. Governor, my apologies. I, I fell asleep at my desk. I didn't realize the time had passed. But I have some great news to share with you. Can you forgive my tardiness and can we still have dinner? BC tries to salvage his meeting and his honor. She waits before she answers. I'll order pizza in. Meet me in my office, and we can still do this. She sounds more than a little put off. I'll be there soon, B.C. tells her. B.C. freshens up and heads off, making for the governor's offices. He's buzzed in and puts on his best, so sorry, look, as he walks into Amanda Erskine's office. She stands up behind her desk to greet him. Huh. Forgot how short she was. She always seems taller. She's got a no-bullshit presence. I like that. Erskine is about five foot five. She wears her straight brown hair in a sensible cut at her shoulders. She seems to favor standard-issue jumpsuits over fashions, although B.C. has seen her in sensible dress suits at formal events. She's wearing a neutral gray jumpsuit today. Very sensible. Everything about this woman screams sensible. She makes me think of my old school teachers, or the ladies at the library. But with more drive or something. Hope you have a good excuse. I suppose it's backed up by your great news? Governor Amanda Erskine says with a dismissive, accusatory tone in her voice. She can be a hard ass. She doesn't talk like a librarian. Just gotta tell it like it is. Yes, it's all tied together. BC starts with some urgency. I'm sorry. It's been extremely difficult for me to get to see you. You know that. I had no intention of messing this up, believe me. But, well, stuff happened today. It's important we talk about it. Now, tonight. Okay, fine, Erskine says. Sit down. I've already ordered the pizza. B.C. lays it out. Look, I'm sorry I'm late, but I was speaking with the Pope, the Ayatollah, and a top UTZ CEO trying to make this upcoming peace conference mean something. So there. And will it? Erskine challenges him. Well, strangely enough, B.C. smiles. That's now up to you. Erskine smiles back at him. Maybe not such a hard ass. The door alarm rings, interrupting them, 
as the pizza arrives. While they eat, B.C. fills Governor Erskine in on the day's successes. He doesn't explain exactly how he got the two sides to agree, but she seems to figure it out. It remains unspoken, but she nods knowingly when he doesn't answer her questions in every detail. I already knew some of that, she tells B.C. The new head of the UTZ Council, DeMag, put out a press release today, saying he would be here in one of his first official capacities for the UTZ. And now you've arranged this simultaneous announcement for tomorrow, by the Ayatollah and the Pope? Tomorrow at noon, GMT. So. Erskine closes her eyes, adding things up in her head. I guess you'll be needing some rooms for these folk. Probably around 150 rooms altogether, B.C. figures. Right. We can open up an unused residential section. That'll work. Needed to be done anyway. It's just been sitting vacant since last June. Not enough people to warrant opening it up, she says, thinking out loud. B.C. is grateful. That's even better than I'd hoped for, he says, smiling. Great. So who's going to be paying for all this? She asks him. Paying? B.C. stops smiling. It costs money to power up and pump air into a new section, she explains. But wait, B.C. stops her. Didn't you just say you've been needing to do that anyway? Sure. But we wouldn't be doing it yet, she tells him. Hard-ass, indeed. I don't know how it will be paid for, B.C. admits. I can try to find a way, maybe through corporate sponsors or other donations. I don't know. Not yet. Huh, Erskine says. I appreciate your honesty. Well, I'm willing to work under the premise that you'll somehow attempt to compensate Lunar Prime for costs and any damages. I promise to try, B.C. says. Good enough, she tells B.C. She grins a little. Look, she says, softening her tone. We want an end to this war as much as anyone. I want this peace conference to succeed, even if I still don't appreciate how you roped me into it, she says with a frown. The moon has a lot to gain in a lasting peace, she admits. But that's because we've paid a lot. Lunar Prime has been beat up by both sides. You guys do the fighting, and we pay for it. I see where you're coming from, B.C. tells her. How empathic of you, she says with some sarcasm. Do you want me to pay for this pizza? B.C. asks with a smile, trying to lighten things up. It's a start, Erskine jokes, finally cracking a smile. Over the rest of their pizza dinner... Erskine agrees to support B.C.'s peace conference efforts with proper security arrangements and her full participation, as long as B.C. agrees to pay for it. Somehow. B.C. shakes her hand as he leaves, and thanks her for everything. Don't thank me yet, she says. You haven't seen the bill. Jeesh, B.C. jokes. How much does a cheese pizza cost these days? She laughs and sends him on his way. B.C. makes his official pre-announcement of the impending simultaneous announcements at 11 a.m. the next morning, an hour before they occur. News services are alerted. A communications whirlwind ensues. Amazingly, everyone is where they're supposed to be by noon GMT. The Pope and the Ayatollah both simultaneously announce they will attend the next conference in person. Both will travel to the moon in five and a half weeks. On February 12th, the announcements are shown side by side in most media, giving B.C. the image he was hoping for. And all I had to do was stretch the truth just a bit. How else could I have gotten around those stubborn bastards? That was... Chapter 10, Part 2 of Vatican Ambassador on Glow in the Dark Radio. Well, BC has an actual real peace conference on the way. Pieces are falling into place. Now, if they can actually make it through the next five weeks or so without killing each other, we'll, we'll see if this can actually happen.
Our next chapter is another ridiculously long one, so it's going to be in pieces too. So we'll be getting into chapter 11, part one on our next episode. Again, I wanted to say a word about leaving reviews. It's very important to review podcasts and books. If you have a chance, please drop down stars for ratings or what have you, or drop down a phrase or two as a short review and let people know what you're enjoying. As a DIY person, that's all I got is you helping me get the word out. So I do appreciate it. Thank you. I also appreciate patrons. I was talking about that before we got into the chapter. And I want to thank my patrons again for helping to support this podcast. You can do so for either $2, $5, or $10 a month at patreon.com slash glowinthedarkradio. And a big thank you again to those of you who do. That is all for this time. I'm your host, your writer and reader, Mike Luoma. We'll be getting into Chapter 11, Part 1 on our next episode of Glow in the Dark Radio. Glow in the Dark Radio. This podcast presentation is copyright 2023 by Michael F. Luoma and is protected under a Creative Commons Attribution Non-Commercial No Derivatives 4.0 International License CC by NCND 4.0 Music by Kevin McLeod You can find his work at Incompetech.com Mike's books are available in ebook, paperback, and audiobook wherever you find books online. Get links and more details at glowinthedarkradio.com and mikeluoma.com. This has been a presentation of Glow in the Dark Radio. Glow in the Dark Radio.